God is so good to us. Have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to the book of Judges. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. We also have, if you're ever interested, at the back there we have uh, complimentary Bibles for you to use during our services. If you'd like to do that, or you could follow along as the scriptures are portrayed. We never used to put the scriptures up there because I'm stubborn. <laughs> but we have done it since we uh, have been online. So the people online, whoever joins us, they don't have a Bible or whatever condition of their so their soul is in, they have an opportunity to see the word of God uh, being presented. That's what we do. Judges chapter 16, we're going to begin our reading at verse number 16. Here we go. And it came to pass when she, speaking of Delilah, pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. They told her all of his heart and said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon my head, for I've been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. And if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up this once, for he has showed me all of his heart and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees and called for the man and he caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I'll go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. For the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. How be it? The hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Let's go to verse number 25, Judges 16, 25. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson that he may make sport, make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and, and he made them sport and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I might feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I might lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women, and behold, while well, Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. O oh God, that I may at once avenge the Philistines from my two eyes. Then Samson took a hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on that which it was born, of the one with one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon, upon pardon me, the lords and upon the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he had slew in his life. Jesus, we are so thankful, God, for your spirit that we feel strong in the house already, even with our songs. Your presence is in this house today. Allow the Holy Ghost to talk to every heart and life. We we'll give you praise and give you glory. We ask you, God, for your anointing to fall upon the speaker and upon the people today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. you may be seated. <clears throat> this afternoon, I want to preach to you a message titled, The Need of a Breakthrough. Amen. The Need of a Breakthrough. Last night when Brother Holland sent out his text about us gathering together for prayer, I thought, wow, you know, sometimes you're praying, God, I'm I hope my mind and heart's going in the right direction. This is what you want me to pray to, the direction you want me to go. And 
And after I read his text, I sent him a, an individual text, and I said, well, if I have any doubt before, I don't have any doubts now. Amen. But we are moving forward with where God wants us to be. It's a known fact throughout history, when left unguarded, how that in the hearts and the lives of we as a people of God and concerns to really we as a church, that over time, what we as a people of God, along with those whose lives are lived on the outside of God's protection, in their lives, can, they can experience what is known as a downtime. The time when in our personal lives, things just don't seem to be they that do nothing other than get into a rut. A time when in the church as a congregation, we seem only to want to go through the motions and really not that the Spirit of God wouldn't move in our midst, but nothing out of the ordinary occurs. And that is in concerns to service after service and prayer meeting after prayer meeting. It just is church. We come because this is what we do. We gather because this is what we do. We sing, that's because what we do. We hear the word of God and then we go home. Now, without meaning any offense and concerns to those who are living on the outside of the umbrella of God and his plan for their lives. It is the people in the world who too experience a similar downtime, a time where their life is what seems to be, which is just goes around and around like a goldfish in a bowl. Meaning there's nothing new, that there's nothing that's happening in their lives. And really for the most part, they as a people like us just exist and together we do this by lacking, by us lacking any form of motivation with a desire that they see, pardon me, things change in and within our lives. Nothing's different. And the question could be asked, well, just how does this happen? How does this come about in a person's life? You know, what is it that causes this kind of an unmotivated life and lifestyle to be that all that comes over those who fall prey to this kind of an attack. Oftentimes it is life. Because life in itself has the power to bog people, and including we as a people of God, down. For just like the scriptures declares, it is the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches that wield within them the power to choke out the word of God and the word that it to us is the very source of every Christian strength and life in God. Life just kind of buries you down. Life is what kind of puts all those weights upon our shoulder, maybe upon our backs, and we just have that feeling that I don't have any sense to want to go beyond typical everyday life. Primarily in concerns to those who are living in the world is such a power that has the power to literally zap the strength out of the lives of ordinary people. How? I'm going to tell you how. First, they who are always going and they're, they're getting, they're trying to get ahead when all the while, without paying much attention, life is what's taking whatever strength and fortitude that they in their life might have or had. Life is just draining you in its pulling it out of you when in comparison the lives of we as a people of God, it's we who too can allow, if we're not careful, to begin to lose our need of prayer. Along with the loss of even the fact of our need of gathering together on a weekly basis in order to refill our spiritual tanks. How? Through the preaching of the word and, and, and how? By the gathering together and, and encouraging one another and being together and in one mind, in one accord, singing those songs of Zion and feeling the power and the presence of us as a people of God together. Why? Because two or three gather together in his name. The Bible says Jesus is in the midst. And so we can, if we allow this to happen to us, it'll suck the life right out of us. So in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 12, it's generally attributed to the apostle Paul. The writer writes this. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents 
of the heart. See, God designed his word to be that which renews us and that which regenerates our spiritual body and that through none other than the preached word. The Bible says it was through the foolishness, foolishness pardon me, of preaching that he used the word of God to save them that believe. The world thinks it's foolish, but to us it's life and it's liberty. It's that renewing. It keeps us in the know and allows us in the spirit to be able to be in tune with our creator. And in the world, it is life that causes both our bodies and our minds to become tired after the long day at work or in the midst of our everyday living to the point where when it's we who come into the house of God, we quickly can become the ones not willing to put any, if much effort at all, into that of our gaining and our acquiring that of our, the attention of the Spirit of God. I just want to come here and say, I, I just want to say, I'm, I'm not going to put a lot of effort in it to, to it today. I, I don't really feel like it, you know, because life has kind of drained me and I had to go all week and I worked all week and I went home and did my chores and yeah. Saying to ourselves, I just don't feel like it. I'm not motivated enough to go beyond just singing the songs and enduring the service until the time when I can go home and prepare to go on to that of another day. Can I get a witness? All right, otherwise we could say, well, we refuse to admit reality and, and that lie that says, not, not me, oh, I've never done that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, even as pastor, sometimes life can strike you and, and, and bear you down. And so you, you come and you, you've got to put it forth and, and you've got to be willing to pray. We can come to prayer meetings on Tuesday and, and Saturday for, for 30 minutes, but you know I'm gonna come and I'm gonna sit right there and I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm going to come to service and I'm going to show up because, you know, it's my duty. No, it's not. It's what you should want to do. I'd like to be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to put nothing into it because I just don't feel like it. Once you hear this today with that kind of a numbing of the senses, we as a people of God and and that of our being willing to allow this kind of a spirit to take over uh, our lives living for God or not has a potential of our and even your only experiencing a limited move of God and that of your personal life. And it, it is such a spirit in the world that over time has the ability to take from you any, if not all of your human strength to want to press on. I've talked to people over different times of, of my life and they say, I, I just had enough and, and I just don't care. And I don't even want to try. And I just do this to exist. And I'm looking at them, really. I know what you need. You know, you need God. <laughs> I, I just don't care. And how does, it, how does it happen? It starts in the world with people saying things like, I just said, I don't care. I can't be bothered to try to escape the doldrums. What's that? The stagnation, the lethargic attitude within my life. Frankly, the I don't care attitude is also prevalent among many a child of God. And that's why they or maybe even you are just happy enough to have a touch of God without your being the one to experience the full power of God being what moves and manifests in your life. I'm just happy to get the warm and fuzzies and, and go home. Well, I don't know about you, but many times I'm not just happy to get the warm and fuzzies. I need that regeneration of my spirit. I need that moving of God in my life so that when I get up on Monday morning, if you're going to go back to work or go, go on with life, I got Jesus on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. But I've seen it over the years where people, God's people, are not willing to put much into a service or prayer. And at times it would be that which would, we would be shamed by some denominal church organizations that don't have the Holy Ghost, but they know how to pray. You'd go, wow. You know, you walk, I remember at times in the summertime in Kelowna walking by this big, huge tent that was set up. And, and it sounded like a party was going on the inside. And it wasn't a party. It was... Uh, a charismatic group and organization and people come together together and they threw out all the stops and, and then you go to our Pentecostal apostolic church prayer meetings sometimes you're going quiet I think there's one person there praying and yet there's a whole lot of us in there praying and, 
and service would go on and the songs would go forth and and we just sang but there's other times when i've i've heard i've heard this before where people were walking down the street and then they just stopped in front of the church they looked at the church door they made a turn and they walked right into the church house they wanted to see what was going on in there I've seen it by we as a people of God really not devoting our energies and our efforts in a Godward direction. I'll give you 150% at work. I'll give you 152% in overtime because you're paying me more money. I'll give 100% in my life for my pleasure seeking and everything else. But you know, when it comes to God, I'm not going to put really a whole lot of effort into it. No, we're just instead satisfied with going through the motions of being satisfied with having church. You know, our routine. We come to church, that's our routine. What we do as Christians, instead of being the ones to, and God to go beyond the normal and desire to reach into the supernatural, where the Spirit of God really begins to move. We were singing some of the songs today, and, and all of a sudden, I just felt them do that. It's going up down my backbone. I thought, you know what, God, you're here. Amen. Right now, the presence of God is here, and I think it made that comment. Whatever you need today, you can have. You want it? You can have it. Why? Because the Spirit of God is moving. Why? Because all the cylinders are starting to fire together. We're moving in the same direction. We have the same desire. We didn't come here to sit as a theater and get entertained. No, we came here to entertain the King of Kings and that Lord of Lords. <laughs> Once again, in concerns to those on the outside of the church, it is they who, if they allow such a spirit to possess them. Yes, I did say to possess them. They find themselves seeking to drown away their pitiful lives with none other than alcohol or drugs. And you find them being driven into stages of depression and on and on, etc. Why? Because in their lives, it's they who, have, who see no way out, no way in their minds, in their hearts, where they believe that they, shall I say, or even maybe you will ever be able to escape. This is life. I knew this one fellow one time. I don't think he was sober a day in his life. He had to get up and find some way to get inebriated. So what? So he can wipe out his day. He can just get rid of it. I knew this one fella who was uh, helping out our landlord and collecting rents. And, and this young man and his uh, partner, we'll call her that, uh, all, every day, all the time I saw them, I smelled marijuana all over them. And I'm thinking, are you ever not high? This is how they drown out their life. They don't think that they can escape such a downward spiral of that of their lives or their lifestyle. And this I want you to know will be what continues to occur both in our lives as well as in the realm of the church. And that is until, until such a time when the same old, same old is no longer what we are as a people or as a church desire. I don't want the same old, same old pastor. I don't want to just come to church and pray my prayer and, and sing my songs. I want more than that. You know, I want to go on and be that. In other words, until until we the people want desire more. The song says more of you. Jesus, I want more of you. I've got to have more. I want to feel God really moving and pulsating in the inside of my body. I don't just want to come and hear the message or sing a song and go home. I need more. Yes, yes. Come on now. This is when the realization of a need of a breakthrough in both our personal lives as well in the lives of the church begins to come into focus. Hang on, hang on, wait, wait, wait. No, I, I can't keep doing this. Right, right, right. I'm not existing, I'm going home empty just the way I came to church. I'm not plugging into the 220. I'm not feeling energized and re-energized and, and that's wrong because God wants me to be renewed and fresh every day. Amen. The Bible says daily he loadeth us with benefits. How can he load a dead, a dead carcass in, on the spirit of our life with benefits? we can't even receive them. So in concerns to both the saved and the unsaved, where it is that we are, you stop and take an inventory of that of your life circumstance, and you declare once and for all, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna continue to settle for the emptiness and nothingness in my life. And starting immediately, things are gonna change. I'll tell you what, when people make a decision, things are going to change. I am going to do something, I'm gonna do anything when now i'm going to start today and so it is in this state of affairs that we or maybe you 
at the least begin to desire, to procure, to obtain, to, acqu uh, to acquire in your life, to secure, to gain in some form or another a need of a breakthrough. I've got to get out of this rut. I have got to get out of this block because that's not God. That's not life. You know what we do sometimes? We, we get out and we say, it's too hot. Then in the wintertime, we say it's too cold. And then we get into the spring and then it's not warm enough. Have you ever got out and smelled the fresh air or looked at the pretty trees or even in the fall time when they begin to change color? Oh, they're getting all oh, my yard. I've got to clean them up. Where's the beauty of God in your life? What beauty? And people, they get upset. Why? Because it's every day. But I've got to break out of that. I've got to realize that, you know, hey, the sky's blue. The grass is green. And every day, Jesus is the reason you're listening this morning. For every season, Jesus is the one in my life who makes everything brand new. Oh, hallelujah. Now, how do you do that? How do you, how do you get a breakthrough, folks? By shaking yourself and by your no longer accepting. Did you catch that word? Yeah. Accepting what life tries to throw at you. In other words, it is a refocusing of both your life and your life priorities that need to be brought into the forefront of your mind with a definite desire to seek change, to change the way that life for you even maybe has been going on for years. Have you ever heard somebody say to you, it's just me, this is just me, this is who I am. Well, maybe who I am right now is what I, not what I want to be. If you sit down with people in reality and you say, is that really what you want to be? Well, no, this is just the way I am. Well, wouldn't you like to be something better and different? Yeah, you know, I, I would, but I'm, I'm too tired, and I, and I don't care. Well, why don't you care? Well, because I don't think there's a way for me to escape. Where are we going? Right back to what I just said. And you say, well, I think it's time. You need a breakthrough. You need to get up out of that little shell of emptiness, and you need to fill your life, and especially with God. Speaking today to the church is at this crossroad of our decision making, of our Christian experience in God as a collective body of Christ that together we must decide the same old, same old church is not what we as a people of God want. Right, right. You hear me? My, my first pastor used to say, if you're going to sit, and of course, uh, pre-COVID, it's about 39 years ago, well, probably about 36 years ago, but anyhow, he said, if you're sitting there, and the person next to you is like a bump on a log and you're trying to worship and they're not? Move! That's what he used to tell us. Don't sit there and die with them. Because here you are, in the name of Jesus. And they're like this. In, in, in. And you get intimidated. I became a second seat saint by order of choice. Because I didn't want to look back at people thumbing through the Bible, sitting there with their eyes closed and ignoring the church or the pastor and the preaching and, or playing with the kids or, or just doing things to be distracted. It would drive me crazy. I can't get, I got to listen to what the word of God says. And, yeah. and if you're in my way, I'm going to get you out of my way. So he would say, move, you know, get yourself in a position and you have some crazy lady or guy over here and, and they're getting into the service and you're feeling, well, do that same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Because they'll help you to break free. Amen. They'll help you to get to your breakthrough. Woo! They'll allow you and your spirit not to feel hindered in your spirit. And the church together, you know what? We, we've got to have a collective desire that every one of us are tired of the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I can't have half the cylinders firing mm -hmm. and the other half asleep. So. <laughs> I believe with all my heart, really I do, and truly I do, that we do have a demonstration of the truth of God's word. I believe that 100%. But what it is that we as an apostolic church in this 21st century need to acquire is a breakthrough in the realm of the demonstration of God's miraculous in our lives. And it concerns to the, the church. Well, how do you attain that, Pastor? I'll tell you how. By people praying through in every service. By souls, visitors having their own experience in and within the realm of their own personal Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Being crazy just like us. Woo! Yes. Calling out, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. And, and praying until they're filled or maybe you're refilled with the Holy Ghost. 
in every service, speaking in unknown tongues. I want this. <laughs> yeah, this is what I like. Leaving here saying, we just got out of church. <coughs> and not saying, so what the preacher preach on? Oh, the platform. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe really within my heart, ladies and gentlemen, today that it's the scriptures that declare, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Because when we or you get sick and tired of just going through the motions, and we desire more than anything else than that of a demonstration of the moving in the miraculous of the Spirit of God in the church. Yeah. Hear me, saints. That's when in this church that Spirit of God is what is going to start to move. Amen. That's when things are going to cut loose. That's when Pentecost will become exactly what it is called, Pentecost. Amen, amen. 50 days, Penta, after the Feast of Pentecost. I'll tell you what, when they're in that upper room, I don't believe they're doing a whole bunch of mumbly prayer. I think that they were praying fervently. God had promised the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That Spirit of God was going to fall. And what did the Bible say? It says, and tongues of fire fell upon each of them and, and where they were sitting. And there appeared in them cloven tongues like the fire. And they all were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. And let me tell you, honey, you can think of it any other way. I'm not going to cross your theology. But when they spilled out into the streets, the Bible says, and the multitudes came together. Right. I don't think it was, thank you, Jesus, for this food and, and bless our service. And, and thank you for the Holy Ghost. That was the nicest thing you ever did for me. And nobody ever bought me a present like that before. <laughs> I don't believe the multitude. They came, they had a breakthrough. Woo! They got they were there for maybe seven, ten, twelve days, and when they got out of there, they were turned up and they were turned on. They were Pentecostal and they were apostolic. Oh, wow! Come here, Harry! Amen. Julie! Sandra! Come on! What are you doing? Come on! Take your break right now! We got it over here! Amen! Come on! These crazies, 120 of them. They're out there having a breakthrough. Amen. So what did we read today? We read about in Judges chapter 16, the story of a man named Samson. <coughs> Samson was given strength by Almighty God and came through his hair. Right from the get-go, he started doing things wrong and, and, and using his power not to use it for the power of God. And, and he was told that don't, don't go seeking out those Philistine women because they're evil and they're, they're idolatry and idolatrous and so on. And, but he sought for woman on the outside of the will of God and, and he took for granted what? His anointing. Let me tell you, I'm going to stop there if you don't mind. I just felt that one hit. I'm going to stay just for a minute. He took for granted his anointing. Mm -hmm. If you've repented of your sins, you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ but for the remission of sins by immersion and you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost spoke, spoken in an unknown tongue. Haven't spoken in an unknown tongue as the evidence, and you're living your life for God. There's an anointing, I believe, with all my heart that comes with that. But it was like Samson, he was gifted from God. He was given an extra strength and power from God, but he took that anointing for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to be careful not to take our anointing for granted, not to take for granted the fact that we can come to church that the spirit of God can move, that an alcoholic can be delivered right in our service and a drug addict can walk out of here and take his pot and drugs and flush them down the commode and that, that things could happen. People can get the Holy Ghost praying in our altars and, yeah. and praying right where, during songs. They should be able to receive the Holy Ghost. We can't take that anointing for granted. Right. <clears throat> but it was Samson who we read who sold his soul and the lap of his Delilah. But then it goes on from there. We go on to that point where after they bore his eyes out and after they kind of bound him and made him grind in the mill, we come to a time in Samson's life where he desired to experience even in the face of his death. It's almost like just one more time, God, a need of a breakthrough. Right. They took his eyes. They treated, the Bible says that they made sport with him. And if you look into that in history, 
That means they probably threw their garbage at him. They probably hurled insults at him. They probably insulted the God that he served. They mocked his anointing. They mocked his humanly power because his spiritual power in him was gone. You look at a person who, who repents and gets baptized and gets the Holy Ghost and goes out into the world and people just go, see, I told you there was nothing in it at all. And you go home and you sit in the darkness of your room maybe and you begin to cry. And you begin to call out to God, saying, God, this is not what I wanted. This is not the position of life I was looking for. This is not the direction I wanted life to take me back to that pit. So what do you begin to desire? Like Samson, he began to desire a breakthrough, some way to get revenge on his enemies, but some way to regain his power. And as far as those who now are on the outside looking in, speaking of the church, those who desire in their lives to live for God, considering giving and living your life for God, the same goes for you. Yeah, it does. For when it's you who get sick and tired of being sick and tired of a dead life and lifestyle, and that who begins to understand that of your need of a breakthrough in your life, that's when it will be you who have a dead dog determination be the one to bust out of your lackadaisical life and lifestyle. And it's you will in turn will be the one to enter into a realm where the mighty moving and the power of God will begin to flow. We can look back on our lives, those of us who came from the, the grossness of the world and from the clutches of our sins, and we can look at the fact that we'd get on Friday and Saturday used to be the time you got drunk. Sunday you, you held over with your hangover, and Monday you went back to work, and it was Monday to Friday, you always look for Friday. You know what? I'm, I'm excited about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm excited about Saturday, especially about Sunday. Seven days a week, I get excited. Not in the world. And so you, you look at people like that, and they go through that same old experience. But you know, they get, I'm tired of this. Mm. I get drunk every weekend. Whoopee, too. Yeah, yeah, come on. I work to pay my bills. Whoopee, too. Come on. Please. That's not enough. I need a breakthrough. I want to get to the forefront where the power of God begin to move my life and things will change. Yes. Yes. And so today it's I who's come to make a bold and a daring declaration to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice. And that is in the face of whatever it is that you now or in the future. Oh, what do you mean the future? Nobody knows the future. Well, you do. You might get to that place where you're okay now. But suddenly you begin to drift into the doldrums, that lacks a physical place. You might find yourself going through, and my declaration, pardon me, to you today is this. Instead of you just throwing up, uh, throwing in the towel and quitting, instead of you throwing up your hands and calling it a day, in the light of any and all circumstances of life, your life, it's how you says to you that the time in your life your own life has come, the time where we as a church, as a body of Christ, stand up in order to declare to every form of adversity and our adversary how that as far as my life is concerned, as far as where it is that we at church, the church people are concerned, as a people of God right now where we stand, it's our desire to break out, our desire to get out from under the grips of our adversary, the one who daily, on a daily basis, seeks to sap all the life out of us. You know, we get off work, and, and, and we sing a song, and, and pastor does that sometimes, mocking me. He's not mocking you personally, just the spirit that's there. And there's a song that uh, was sung many years ago, and it went like this. When, this uh, when the saints come marching in, I used to sing the song, oh, when the saints come dragging in. Oh, Lord, I don't want to be in that number when they come dragging in. We should have a snap to our step and come through that door ready to worship, ready to pray, expecting God to move. What's that called? It's called a breakthrough. And, and since there appears to be no other option presenting itself to us as individuals or as a church, the declaration that needs to be made is the need for a breakthrough of, in God has come. That's what we need, church. We're in this end times, and I'm telling you, this end times can fill your mind with all kinds of negative. Right. It can pull you into the darkness of where the world is going, but guess what? I look up and my redemption draws not. I realize that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. <laughs> so it's time for you in your life. It's time for we as a church once and for all to get, to penetrate, to come through, to preach, to advance, or step forward in our life 
as well as our church in our circumstances, and I mean when, right now. Amen. Right here in our current state of affairs, understanding that Satan has held us back and bound long enough. Amen. Long enough from our being able to fully experience what? A revival in the church. You know, you know what revival is? Oh, that means when people come in. I'll tell you what, honey, when revival happens in your soul, Amen. and you get revived, and your, your tank gets full, and out of your belly comes flowing those rivers of living water. Hey, hey, what church do you go to? I want to go there too. I've gone to work in times past in the, the secular world, and, 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 and I'm serious. You know, they say, what do you want? What am I on? Yeah. Don't you cuss or anything? Aren't you miserable? I am. No. You got a pasted face with a smile on it. See, a Christian should be able to walk into work. Good morning. Oh, quiet. It's blue Monday. You are right. It is blue Monday. Sky is blue and grass is green. And Jesus is the master of my heart. Yep. Oh, you pasted face. I remember a time when our first pastor went into a bank. I, don't know, I probably told this story before, but it just popped my mind. I think it's funny. He walked into a bank. It was a big lineup, long lineup. It was the end of the month. And he sat there and he started, started singing some song and whistling. And there was a guy about three ahead of him. Who let that bird in? <laughs> you quit your smiling. Don't you laugh in church. You all should be just frowning right now. Really? I don't think so. Who let the bird in? And, and our pastor, I won't tell you what he said anyhow. Uh, that's how we ought to be. We ought to be different from the world. Why? Because you just got out of church and you had yourself a breakthrough. Amen. So when? When we need this breakthrough? Oh, COVID, variants, and and all this threatening of the government. Really? Get a breakthrough. Oh, I've got to sit down for this. Can you help me please? What am I going to do? Where are we going to go? What, what's going to happen? Where, where's life taking us? Stop. Stop. Yeah, stop. Oh, look at the back of the book. Oh, that's Revelation. It's not Genesis. Anyhow, look at the back of the book. The Bible says we win. The Bible says we're going to rise one day to meet him in the air. I tell you what, when the enemy comes in like as a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Doesn't mean we're not going to go through the valley, but we're going to come out of that valley on the other side. High and lifted up. So no matter who you are, living for God or not, I say the time's coming for you to seek until it's you who discovers that place of a peace in God. We talk about a peace that passes all understanding, right? Yeah. Anybody help me today? What is what's what's that? And you look somebody in the face and say, Don't you have the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Aren't you redeemed? Yeah. We gotta get that peace in God. That that place where I'm at peace with God. Because God knows where I am at any given time. A time has come for all of us to be those who in our lives are triumphant. We're more than overcomers. We're more than conquerors through Christ. As it is we who step into that next level in that next dimension in God. As we rise and we walk into church and church hits the floor and we hit it running and prayer meeting is something that lights my soul and the songs are what speak to my spirit and the word of God penetrates and grabs me and I get up and I walk out there and say, look out world, Woo! here I come. Amen to that. What happened to you? I had a breakthrough. Amen. Yeah, that, that's what it was. And, and so could it be you who has been or maybe it's even living in the wrong side of God's promises? Is that maybe where you're at today? How about you're bearing the weight and the guilt and the shame of your past, your present, which you might have to face in your future? Where's all the promise of God in your life? It's you. If you're here today, and you're feeling sick and tired of being sick and tired in your mind, and you're ready to be the one to step out in order for you to move forward, mm -hmm. then it's you who needs to declare 
that it's you who's going to stand up, see, and be counted. One who declares once and for all, I might be up against the odds right now. My life might not be where I'd like it to be right now, but I'm here to declare loud and clear that as far as my life is concerned and as far as what I need, I need a breakthrough. And I know that starting today, my breakthrough is going to come. And he just changed because you know what? Many people, they get mindsets and they're down and they're depressed. And they don't know how to get out of it. They're always sick or they're not well or they got problems. We have this one brother that I would never name a name that we've known over the years. And, and, and he used to say, he'd get up in testimony. We used to have testimonies, you know. Testimonies to lift up God and magnify what God said. Oh, that devil, he would say, he got me. And, and he just drank. And you're going, wow, that's a testimony? Oh, but thank you, Jesus. Uh, God, God, God prevailed. I'm thinking, wow, after all what you just said, I'm so thankful that, that God prevailed. We've got to get to that place where we have that declaration. Satan, your kingdom is coming down. I'm not going to be defeated. I'm not going to admit my defeat. I'm not going to give up. I refuse to give in. And as far as my life is concerned, I'm getting a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. I need to come up out of that. Prayer has got to come alive in my soul. Service has got to be something that regenerates my soul. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> I feel many times as a church, my body of believers that the breaks have been on long enough. The odds have been stacked against us long enough. Even if you're ready and willing to turn around to get that breakthrough. I, I've come to church. Now, sir, I'll be honest. And I felt like out there, some of, not all of us, but it's just like there was a smell in the church of, of tires and brake fluid burning. And thinking, come on, get your foot off the brake. You know how to stop the devil from drowning? Yeah, take your foot off his head. Anyhow, the brakes are on. And so I get up there and I feel like truck dust. And we wouldn't go anywhere. But it's time to enjoy, to enter into going into a place where I'm happy and in defiance to that enemy. I'm going to have church if I'm sick. I'm going to have church if I'm doing good. I'm going to have church no matter what because I'm ready for a breakthrough. And how do you get that breakthrough? You declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Holland talked the other day about strongholds and how the enemy gets us in strongholds and you allow a voice in your head. Well, guess what? I was getting ready for church today and here come this voice. And you know what I told him? Loud and clear. I said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Amen. You, you don't want to shut up yet, devil? And I said it louder. And, and then I started talking in tongues. And I was in my shower, excuse me, and I I was getting ready. And he wanted to put the cap on it already. He wanted to slow this down and stop that move. Right, come on. No, because I need a breakthrough. Let's listen to this, okay, church? Here we are, Second Chronicles chapter 7. I'll let you go before 6 p.m. We only got one service. <laughs> Second Chronicles 7, verse 14 through 16. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14 through 16. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. I think many times, and I believe this with my heart, that God looks forward to us gathering together, that he looks forward to the worship. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of Israel. Israel typifies the church. God looks forward to us lifting up his name and giving him praise. God looks forward to us bringing our petitions and our praises and, and our needs to him because he's a God that delivers and he's a God that saves. So when it's you as an individual comes to a place where you see no other option than then your need of a breakthrough and that of your breaking out of your current life circumstance in a position of faith, of sheer 
faith. It's then that you, without wavering, determine in your life to come out of that of your situation or circumstance. And then a determination that nothing and nobody, my friend, is going to be able to get in your way, having no thoughts or retreat, prepared to do whatever it is you feel necessary to do for you to experience that breakthrough. Listen to this, Samson, there he was making sport. And did you hear what the Bible says? The little boy took him by the hand and was holding mighty Samson by the hand to take him to the pillars he couldn't see. But unbeknown to the Philistines, his hair was growing. Let's just stop there for a minute. Is that okay? Unbeknown to the enemy, this church, there's a stirring and there's a moving. We had a real awesome time in God last night in prayer for 30 minutes. Brother Holland played this song that really spoke to our hearts. There's a stirring and a moving, and unbeknownst to those foolish little Philistines, it was Samson's hair that began to grow. They weren't paying attention. They were just too busy making fun of, oh, that little church, that small church. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, nothing's going to happen. But in the hearts and lives of the people on the inside, something was beginning to happen. Now, sadly, Samson had to lose his life and his desire to have his breakthrough, but it doesn't have to be the same with you. What I'm here standing to say to you is this. The attitude that it comes with the option in your life is nothing else. I need a breakthrough. If it's we as a church and you as a person who's ready to witness in your life a breakthrough, then from the inside out, I'm going to tell you what happens. From what comes in my heart, I need a breakthrough. I'm getting a breakthrough. Guess what? God's going to step in and say, here is your breakthrough. And you'll pour out the Holy Ghost. His spirit will move in every one of our lives. Things will begin to change. Your attitude will begin to change. <laughs> now, the one final ingredient that needs to become part of the above mixture and concerns to all that I said, both as individuals and as a church, and the most vital ingredient that needs to be and become part of your daily petition of your fervent prayer is nothing less than the determination that no matter what comes your way or what you come up against, your desire and the need of a breakthrough but you who set your sights upon your being the one to experience exactly what this pastor is preaching to you about. When you say enough is enough. And what you've gone through, maybe what you're going through that right now, as well as the revival that Satan over years has held his hand over our congregation and not let us really break through. The time's come in this church where we're going to get ready to run with the horsemen and not just to walk with the footmen. Times for us to come, including those looking to come on into the church to be ready to do what it is that we need to do. When? Not next week, not next month, not tomorrow. I mean, right now, starting today. Right here, right now, in this service. That's right, right now. See, when it's you in your life who once and for all says, I'm going to get it. I'm going to see my breakthrough. Then people are going to go, hey, hey, wait a minute. You are different. What has happened to you? You're acting different. You're talking different. You don't appear to carry those chains that for months you've been carrying. You know, you didn't talk different. And it's your own personal testimony. You're going to say, I had a breakthrough. And they're going to go, I want that breakthrough. I need that change. I'm sick of my own life. I want what you got having their own day of Pentecost, having their own miraculous happen in and through God, having that opportunity, I hope you're hearing me today, a breakthrough, the need of a breakthrough. Oh, I don't need anything. I think you do. I need a breakthrough. I need that refreshing. I need to be able to wake up on Monday morning happy that it's Monday morning, thankful that I got breath in my lungs, I got hope in my heart, and a longing in my soul to one day to be with Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Having said all that, I don't know what you're waiting for. There are those at this time who have not received the Holy Ghost, those who have not been baptized in Jesus' name. So what are you prepared to do? Sir, man, young person, how long has it been since you were touched by God? Right now, as the Spirit of God beckons you to respond, there you are, here we are, a prayer and praise away. Just a prayer and a praise away from your experience, what I'm preaching to you about. You want the same old, same old? 
Are you just happy to be my four no more? Are you just willing to be sitting there? Or as we stand together, are you ready to be free? Are you ready to break through? I declare loud and clear. Addiction, be gone. Depression, depart. Satan, get lost. Mountain, be moved. Holy Ghost, pour out. Deliverer, appear. Power of God, manifest. Give the faith and empower us. The need to break through is come. What do you need? What's your desire? Where's your hunger?